stream. Uh, like I said before, I hang out on Indie Warehouse on Thursdays. And it uh, turns out we, like, we're getting a lot of rain today. And there's actual water dropping from the ceiling. <laughs> and, it, and it's just crazy. Uh, like I have relocated. But there's like water dripping like four feet away from me right now. Uh, and it's uh, and it's a bit uncomfortable. But I think we're fine. Uh, don't think I'm in risk of uh, electrical shock. So, uh, hey chat. Hey Sparrow. Uh, how, how's everyone doing? Uh, can you hear me loud and clear? So, it's finally time to talk a little bit about uh, items and item design in Relic Hunters. And uh, we are, we have just up uploaded the latest development update, uh, development week number 51. That's been 51 weeks that we have been uh, talking about uh, the development of Relic Hunters Legend. And um, I just want to talk a little bit with you about uh, items and item design. Let me just uh, adjust this window. Not this one. Because it's scratched a little bit. There we go. And uh, yeah, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about items. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just go over the actual updates. So, first, the good news uh, we're finally, finally at a point where we are working exclusively on items and, and loot and drop system. So we have organized uh, the code and everything that we wanted to get done before and now we're ready to just focus uh, and hunker down on doing items for Relative Legend, which is whew, finally. Uh, as the number one loot maniac in uh, Rogue's Nail, I'm excited. I really, I really am. Like, um, and, and the first order of the day is to kind of explain to you how we're actually structuring our items in Relevant Reflection. So if you remember this screenshot, it was from the very first trailer, uh, way back in the day, uh, one year for now actually. Um, and it's, it's still pretty, uh, pretty representative of uh, what's going on. And I want to talk a little bit about how the items themselves are organized and uh, how they work. Let me just see if I can reduce the size of the screen right here. We got a fact that we don't this was an edit, so uh, yeah, this is better. Just so I can, I'm with just my laptop right now, so I need to look at the chat and uh, the browser at the same time. Uh, cool. So, items in Relic Hunters Legend. So, there are three kinds of items that you can equip in Relic Hunters Legend, right? Uh, there are many more things that are going to drop, the currency and materials and all kinds of stuff, but items are the things that you use in your character. And uh, there are three kinds of items. Gear, weapons, and relics. So, gear is stuff like boots, armor and shields and metals and all that and you're going to equip this gear into six slots on the left side right here of your character's inventory right and they're mo most of these items all of them actually are going to give you like a defense rate either but both physical and elemental defense rate in different uh, intensities uh, energy score, which I'll be going to talk about in a future update, but um, maybe today we'll stream, who knows. But here is that, the gear that you get on the left side of your character. And uh, weapons are uh, weapons, so like this, this light SMG is a weapon, uh, you have two weapons, primary, secondary, which you can use. And relics are different. So uh, you carry two relics, a uh, relic gear and a relic weapon. You're on the bottom side of your inventory, and we're not talking about this right now. So uh, we'll leave that to a later date. So we have something called item body. 
in the left lane, which is you can see pretty much right here. So light SMG is an item type weapon, so weapon type. So what this does is it gives items some basic characteristics. Uh, for example, is is the storm too loud, Spiral? Because yeah, it's like a, a really bad storm right now. Like it's dripping water right in front of me. Uh, can you hear me well enough? Like, is the, the background sound uh, too bad? Okay. Uh, so, moving on. Um, so, we have the item die that gives it some basic characteristics. Uh, for example, the, the weapon can be like a light SMG, I can be a shotgun, can be a light pistol, whatever. Uh, and the gear can also be uh, for different types, such as heavy shields or light armor and etc. So what type does is that it defines things such as, and most importantly, which affixes can be rolled into them. We're going to be talking about affixes uh, in a few moments, but uh, the item types determine which affixes uh, can be rolled into them, to that specific type. Uh, and it also helps us group items together. So for example, uh, if you have a plus 10% damage with shotguns, uh, all items that are the shotgun type are going to be affected, so it's important that we have that as well. And uh, these types will help us define some basic ground rules for each item. But then we have the freedom to tweak and modify it for each basic item template that we call an item base. So what that means is uh, we have, like the type is just a general guideline, but we also, like we will create, in this case, the repeater uh, of razors. So the repeater razors is an item base. It's something that it's a light SMG, but has its own characteristics. It might have its difference in beta fire, a little bit different behavior, and uh, maybe its own unique fixes sometimes. But in general, it shares the same characteristics of the light SMG, uh, which will be also important in crafting, which is something that we want to be talking about at a future update. So moving on, now that uh, we talk about the, the bases, like when the item itself drops, it will be unique, right? So even though it is a light SMG and it's a repeater razors, which you can see lots of them throughout the game world, uh, every time a repeater razors actually drops, it's going to be different. So it's going to have like a fragmentation damage bonus, like a condition trigger bonus. Another one might have a little bit more attack. Uh, it might have like a movement speed bonus. Uh, this one in particular is augmented. Most uh, will not be augmented. So every instance of an item Roll Conscious Legend will be randomized and, and unique, uh, but they all come from this item base to the trade, and all of these item bases refer to a specific item type. So we have all of our things like neatly organized, and this can also help uh, reduce the RNG and help you kind of understand how to build your character and which kinds of things you want to use and which kinds of affixes can roll in different types of items, right? What's uh, this So moving on. We're performing gear slots. So all gear, uh, not only they have type and everything else, the weapons have, they also have slots. So every gear uh, goes into a specific slot and every hunter have six gear slots. But the thing is, these six slots are not the same across every hunter. So in total, we have 12 different types of slots. So every hunter has only six. So they have their own unique collection of slots. So one hunter might be wearing heavy boots, while the other wears shoes or light boots or whatever. And, um, these are like the combination of all the six slots. We're gonna try to make them unique for each hunter. Uh, eventually, we're going to run out when we have a lot of hunters, but uh, and some might be weak. But in general, this means that some of the gear pieces that you have in one hunter uh, will not be able to be used uh, in the other. Some will, some won't, right? So the goal with this 
It not only creates more uniqueness and playstyle variety for each hunter, so we also want to create more build variety and more items to hunt and more items to strive for. So with a game like with multiple characters, um, really? Ooh, yeah, this is bad. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. So, um, where was that? Right, so the slots. So we have 12, uh, 12 slots in total, just 6 on each hunter. So this is pretty cool because uh, with a, in a game with multiple characters, it would be extremely boring uh, to get like 6 passing slot items and just use that in every character that you own. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't think it would be super cool to like have complete unique uh, items for each character. Like uh, if you progress with one character and you start to level another, uh, you should be able to use at least some of the items that you have, right? Uh, of course the weapons are, are, are also confusing. And um, the weapons are, we create variety in them with different things like the, the damage type and the ammunition and things like that. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much about uh, all that I have to say about slots right now. Now, if you have any questions, if you like the live streams a bit, like we announced it too, uh, too, too late, uh, almost like 30 minutes before I actually went live. So uh, it's uh, understandable that there's not a lot of people on the live stream right now. Uh, if you are in the live stream and want to ask me any questions, you shouldn't. But uh, just go to the Discord community after the stream's over and just ask me there, and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, so moving on. So we have ready and the fixes. So of course that we're going to have different tiers of item rarity, rarity colors and, and whatnot. So we're going to have seven tiers in the Legend of Legends for launch. Uh, these are crude, common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, and ascendant. So we also have three tiers of unique items, so we have a total of 10 uh, rarity tiers. So we have unique tier 1, unique tier 2, and unique tier 3, which are equivalent to rare, epic, and legendary respectively. So unique tier 1 is, is about uh, as powerful as rare, unique tier 2 is about as powerful as epic, and unique tier 3 is about as powerful as legendary items. So all of these items they will increase in their level and their overall effectiveness as rarity goes up. So we're not going to have a situation where uh, a blue item is worse than a white item. Uh, some uh, loot games do that. Uh, it's it's a choice. Uh, I, I can see the benefits of both approaches. Uh, Path of Exile, for example, you have like uh, the rarities and you also have the item level and the item level uh, determines a lot of how strong the item would be, so it's absolutely possible to have a magic item that is much, much more powerful than uh, the in Path of Exile. So this is a choice, and in Relic Hunter's Legend, uh, I really don't like the feel of getting a really cool like orange tear drop and that you're just drooling over it and then suddenly like 10 minutes later you drop a white item that is better stat wise. I don't like that uh, so we made a decision to keep the tears of rarity actually mean that the item is more powerful so these tears going up they also determine power. So common is more powerful than crude, uncommon is more powerful than common, so forth and so on. Um, so with that, not only their power goes up, but the number and the quality of the fixes increase. So what are our fixes? I've been talking about them uh, for a little while and have to explain it. So if you have been playing action RPGs the past decade, you know what a fix is. Uh, if you haven't, uh, the affixes are the special bonuses in the items. So, for example, in here you see this uh, blue, all of this blue text right here. So, fragmentation damage bonus plus 
condition triggered was 43%. Critical hits cause physical vulnerability for 15 seconds. So these three, they are affixes. So they are uh, effects that enhance what the item is able to provide you. And they are also randomized and scalable. So the kinds of affixes that you get in an item are going to vary from item to item. Uh, the item type, like I said before, is going to determine which affixes you can get on that item, can go. And now, even if you get the affix, that affix is going to come with its own row. Uh, so they're going to be randomized. So if you roll movement speed and boots, it can be plus 5% movement speed, or it can be the 16% movement speed. Right? Um, so the affixes, they can be like green ones, the uncommon ones, they are simpler. They can be blue ones, which are a bit more complicated and the effects are a bit more powerful, more varied. Like, and now uh, we have the unique affixes, so the, the orange ones. Uh, they are unique indeed, and they are going to be play-style defining effects, build-defining effects, right? Um, so the number and quality of the affixes is, uh, depends on rarity, right? So this is pretty much how it goes. Uh, crews and commons, they have no affixes whatsoever. But from when you start dropping the green items, the uncommons, you're going to have one or two uncommon affixes. As you move up up to rares, you're gonna have two or three uncommon faces. This is going to be what we're gonna be for the alpha. So for the next few months, when you're dropping items, welcome to legend for the alpha, you're gonna be dropping up to rare tier, right? Okay? Uh, whereas you move on, uh, you can drop tier one uniques. So the tier one uniques are gonna be pretty much as powerful as rares. So they also have two, three uncommon faces, but they also have their unique faces. So they're like. Uh, more powerful than rares because they have one extra super interesting and beautifying effect. Uh, so the epics, purple items, have three or four rare effects. So this is when you start to get the, the crazy effects. Uh, and tier two uniques are equivalent to epics, but they have uh, the unique effects. Then we have the legendaries. So they have two to three rare fixes and they also have intrinsic rare fixes so this means that uh when we create legendary items we want to diminish the rng a little bit so they're going to have two uh rare fixes they're always there so for example if you roll like a uh, legendary repeater razors maybe we want every razors to have like frag damage bonus and condition traded bonus so every one of those guns I'm gonna drop rid of those two affixes. The roles on the affix is gonna be different, but the affix is always gonna be there. So they are intrinsic affixes to that particular item base, right? Uh, so moving on. We, where is it? There we go. And uh, then they're gonna have two or three affixes that are randomized. So there like, could be any affix that would fit that particular item type, right? And Likewise, your three uniques, they're just like legendaries, but they have the unique on top. And ascendant items, like who knows, we're not talking about them at this time. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have enhancements. So, for enhancements, you're not only like collecting items, like not only getting these cool, like looking for those guard roll affixes but you also have to enhance your items to make them more powerful so you do that with materials materials will drop just like in warframe whenever you play in the game uh depending on where you are which mission you're doing uh, and which difficulty it is you're going to have uh materials drop and these materials you can use to increase the power of your items for enhancements uh so if you enhance an item, it turn into a plus one, and then a plus two, and now plus three. So for example, this gun right here, it's already plus seven. And you can see your enhancement level, plus seven out of 20. So there is a limit to how much you can enhance an item. When you do that, you increase its like intrinsic attributes. So in this case, it's the attack rate. 
So, as you enhance this weapon, the attack rate will go up. And uh, as you increase the enhancement level of gear, your defense rate will go up. So it's a good bonus, a solid bonus is the one that you want. Uh, but there is a limit to how many times you can do this. In this case it's 20. So this limit is determined by the item level. So, where is it? Blah, 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 blah. So, depending on the item rarity, uh, you cannot enhance or it defines how far you can go with your enhancements. So, commons you can go to plus 5, uncommons you can go to plus 10, acquired T1 uniques 15, epics, purples, right? And T2 uniques you can go up to plus 20, which is the case of that razor up there. Legendaries and tier trees, you can go up to plus 25. And ascendants, we're not talking about those. So, um, our main concern with this system is that on one hand, we think it's exciting that you not only you drop the item, but you can also have a little grind to enhance it and like you feel like you're making progress. I, I love that, but we want to make sure that we are not punishing you for dropping new and more interesting items. If you have already invested a lot of materials in the item that you want, right? So that would be a, a big mistake. And we made that mistake before in Relic Hunter Zero. So Relic Hunter Zero, uh, when you're playing Endless Mode, you can enhance your weapons, right? Uh, and originally, you would be using Bounty to do that, the money, like yo. And uh, you would enhance items, and after those items were enhanced, that was it. So, if I had already invested a truckload of money into making like a plus 7 pistol, I dropped a relic pistol, which is like really good, objectively better than mine at base. Uh, I would be almost angry because now I have just invested all of my money into this gun and now I drop a better one, which is something that I should be celebrating. And uh, we fixed that in Relic Country Zero by allowing you to recycle guns. So if you don't want to use that plus 7 gun anymore, you can recycle and you get the materials back. So that's what we're going to be allow you to do in Legend. So you recycle any item that you have enhanced, you get the materials back. About 75% of, of the, those materials. But also, if that item was at the, their peak potential, so if you, if you brought a Legendary up to plus 25, and you recycle them, uh, not only are you getting 75% of those materials back, we're also giving you a special material that wasn't there before, and that special material can only be acquired by recycling a legendary item that was plus 25. So this is also a way to kind of give meaning to upgrade weapons and, and do this. So, but this is something that we're going to keep an eye on. Uh, this is something that we are confident, but we know that games like this are complicated and after you guys test it we want to see how you react and how you feel about it and uh, we want we want items to feel great we want you to have surprise when they drop and you're good we want you to chase for the items that you want we want you to feel like you're constantly making progress no matter where you are in the game so this is not something that we feel like we're gonna get right in the first time. It's very hard to do, and uh, that's why we're doing early, and that's why we have you in the community to help guide us on the right direction. And uh, there's so much more. Like I've been talking for half an hour already, but we haven't scratched the surface. So I haven't talked about gear score, which is super important. Uh, the drop system itself, we're going to start working on it uh, in two weeks. We also have augmentations, mods, the item world, the time lock, the fixes, the cartographer, and uh, the, we have a lot of things, and of course, relics, and the relic hunts, and how you level relics up, and how they define your build, and how they behave, and relic weapons. There, there's a lot of stuff going on as far as progression, RPG systems, and items go in relic hunts like and we will get there in due time. Uh, I have to just control myself and just be talking excitedly about all these features uh, all at once, <laughs> which would be very confusing. So, with this live, I just wanted to give you guys like a, a, a walkthrough 
this new information. Not all of that information is actually new. If you have been following us since last year, since the Kickstarter, we were already talking about things like this. Uh, but this is now consolidated and being implemented as we speak. So we already have like the base items implemented. We're working right now on creating like uh, the affixes and things like that. And uh, it should be done for next week's build, uh, which would be pretty cool. So the drop system itself is not coming in next week. Uh, just uh, just be just be attentive. The the drop system is gonna be afterwards. So first we do the actual items, and when that system is done, we can move on to how we actually going to drop them, which is very complicated. Uh, it involves networking code, uh, server side security cheat protection to make sure not only that people do not cheat for themselves but also that people do not ruin other people's uh, items and, and drops and, and progress so all of these things are very delicate and uh, we know how to approach them we're confident about it it's just not going to be now it's going to be two weeks from now so uh, stay tuned and yeah so i meant this to be like a shorter live stream where I just presented these ideas to you and we talk about it a little bit but uh, it was very late that we announced the stream itself uh, I didn't know if I could make it or not I was talking with Lucy about it and um, not a lot of people came to actually like talk uh, in real time about it but no problem this is going to be uploaded on YouTube so if you're watching this later uh, just come over to discord and let's talk about it uh, if you're a founder, uh, I will be on the hashtag founders channel. If you're not a founder, uh, I'll be on the hashtag monkers uh, channel. So, uh, hello, Blastro. Ah, don't worry. Uh, we, we can talk at Discord later. So, I'm just going to put the link of our Discord community right now on the chat. Discord.gg slash countries. If you're watching this on YouTube, the link is also in the description below. And it's a very cool community, you should join anyway if you haven't already. Uh, we have over a thousand people, and uh, it's very welcoming, very friendly. And yeah, pretty cool. So, if chat has uh, no questions for me, I am probably going to leave because uh, the water is getting very close and it's getting really dangerous here. <laughs> so, to have like electric devices with all this water dripping. So, uh, thank you so much for coming. And uh, talk to you in Discord. Bye-bye.